So in today's video, I'm going to be addressing something that I see get talked about quite a lot in the detailing industry, and that is, is the two bucket method dead? Is it obsolete? And are there better alternatives out there? So what I'm going to be doing is talking about the pros and cons of the two bucket method and comparing it to some other wash methods as well to work out really what is the kind of optimal method. Now, I will start by saying that I really think that this question is very much up for debate and I think it's personal preference. All the methods that I'm going to be talking about are suitable methods and you shouldn't have any issues washing your car and not causing swirl marks and scratches with them. But they each have the pros and cons and it's kind of really up to you to decide which is the most suitable for your wash routine. So I'll kick things off with the two bucket method. So that is when you essentially have a bucket full of clean water and a bucket full of water and your shampoo solution and you dip your mitt into the bucket to collect that shampoo solution, wash a panel with it and then rinse it out in your bucket of clean water and repeat that process throughout the car. So the idea here is that any dirt that you're collecting when you're washing the panel is going to get rinsed away in that bucket so it helps keep that mitt cleaner throughout the entire wash. So in order to actually do the two bucket method, of course, at a minimum, you're going to need your two buckets, your water and your shampoo. But you can also use grit guards in the bottom as well. These are kind of the industry standard and these are going to help any dirt that you might collect stay under the grit guard so it's not swirling about in that wash solution. And it's going to hopefully help keep the mitt cleaner throughout that wash. So you can get a few different types of these. There are ones that have a sort of a curved or a washboard design to help you really scrub at your wash mitt between each panel or you can just have the flatter ones that go right to the bottom of the bucket. I like to use 20 litre buckets, so relatively big buckets, and they're usually filled up with about sort of 15, 16 litres of water. The reason I use quite a lot of wash solution is it is gonna to help to dilute any dirt that might be in the bucket. There's less chance of picking it up on the wash mitt compared to if say you used a five or a 10 litre bucket, then the chance of picking that dirt up is a lot higher. So in terms of the pros of the two bucket method, I think probably the first one and the reason it's so popular is because it's quite easy to actually get started. So a couple of buckets aren't too expensive. Obviously, grit guards ideal. And then it's really just a case of filling up with water and just having your single wash mitt. And it is quite easy to get started. You can get bucket packages on sort of Amazon and eBay that are only costing about 30 quid. So yeah, not too hard to actually get into, especially if you are just starting out. And the second benefit is that obviously if you're only using the one wash mitt here, then you really not got that much laundry to do at the end of it. So that is a definite benefit for some people. So in terms of the cons, one of the main criticisms of this method is the amount of water it uses. So obviously if you are using 15 litres per bucket, that is quite a bit of water to be using and you've got to stand and wait for it to fill up. So it's a little bit of a pain, it can take a few minutes to do so. And another disadvantage really is that it can be actually quite difficult to move those buckets around the car. You can park them obviously at the front or the back of the vehicle and just keep going back to that same spot. But if you are walking between to mince out your mitt, then that is gonna add some time. To make things a little bit easier, you can use bucket dollies. They are fairly expensive, particularly in the UK. I've got some from Carbon Collective, and they're only gonna work if you're dealing with a flat surface. So if you want gravel or stones or anything like that, then they aren't gonna be suitable. But it is an option if you wanna go with this method, but aren't a fan of the weight that the buckets have. And the final issue really that the two bucket method has is how clean you can actually get that wash mitt by dunking it in the water giving it a little scrub on your grit guard and then proceeding to your wash bucket. There is the argument that you won't be able to get enough dirt off that mitt. And by the time you get towards the end of the wash process, there is a risk that that rinse bucket is gonna to start to get reasonably dirty. Now, if you are having trouble with this and noticing what visible grit at the bottom of your bucket, if you've seen any sort of solid actual particles, then really you need to be going back to your pre-wash stage and making sure that that is as thorough as possible. There really shouldn't be any sort of solid particles any grittiness at all at the bottom of your wash bucket after you're cleaning the vehicle. It's okay if it's not crystal clear water, there's a reason we do the contact wash stage, is there is going to still be dirt on the car, that's fine, but you don't want anything that's really going to cause marring or scratching those grittier particles. So the next wash method that I want to address is the foam lance method. So this is actually a method that I've used on my own car for the past couple of years and do really like it. So what it involves having is one bucket of clean water and that's going to be used to rinse your mitt out between panels as you would with the two bucket method. But instead of having that second bucket filled with your shampoo solution, you pop in that in your foam once instead, spraying it over the car and then going round with the mitt as you usually would, rinsing it out in that bucket between panels. So in terms of the equipment that you need for this method, you still just need that mitt, a wash pad, whatever you're using. You only need the one bucket this time though, but you will need a foam once obviously to do this method. Some chemical brands will tell you what dilution ratio of shampoo to actually use in your foam lance. 
However, I generally tend to stick around that one to nine ratio. For most products, that seems to work fairly well for me. A lot of shampoos work really well with this method, but some of my favorites are Garage Therapy One Car Shampoo, Shana Gloss Matter, and Squid Ink HD Pure. These all foam up nicely and do a good job when using this method. One thing that I do want to be really clear on though is that I don't think the foam months method of contact washing is a replacement at all for the pre-wash stage. So I still think you should pre-wash your vehicle using either a citrus, a snow foam or both, whatever your preferred pre-wash chemical is, rinsing that thoroughly from the vehicle and then foaming up with the shampoo. If you skip that pre-wash stage, that's where you're going to run into the majority of issues when causing swirl marks and scratches. And I also want to be clear as well that it's best to be using an actual car shampoo in your foam once as opposed to just using the snow foam that you use to pre-wash it. Snow foams, although they foam really nicely, don't really offer much in terms of lubrication and this is the main thing you really need to be looking for. So using a high quality shampoo is essential here. Now in terms of the pros and cons of this method, I'll start with the positives. I think firstly that it does offer some more lubrication compared to using a two bucket method. Having that shampoo on the vehicle does really help the mitt to slide across the panel and it does feel safer. It's one of the reasons why I switched to it on my MX-5 as the paintwork on that is really soft. And I feel like it's just an extra precaution that might help a little bit. There is also the argument that this method uses less water than the two bucket. I think there's probably not too much in it. Obviously you are saving about 15 litres of water for that extra bucket, but you are gonna have to foam the vehicle and that's gonna use water from your pressure washer probably not going to use as much. However, when it comes to rinsing off that shampoo, usually takes a bit longer if you use the foam lance method rather than the two bucket. So yeah, it might use a touch less water, but I wouldn't really consider it to be a massive advantage here. So in terms of the disadvantages of this method, firstly, you're going to need a foam cannon. So if you're a beginner starting out, you might not have one yet. So it makes it a little bit less accessible. There also is the slight pain of if you are using your foam cannon to pre-wash the vehicle, and you haven't used all the snow foam in your bottle. If you don't have a second foam cannon, you're obviously going to have to pull that out into something else and then fill your foam cannon up with shampoo. So it can be a little bit of a pain if you don't have a couple of foam cannons on hand. There is also the risk of the shampoo drying out when you're cleaning using this method. So in summer, obviously this is more of an issue. I tend to work a couple of panels at a time when using this method in summer. This can obviously help to combat that issue but it is going to add some more time as you're picking stuff up and putting stuff down more often. So all that faff does add a little bit of extra time to the overall process. One of the arguments of a disadvantage for this method as well is that it uses more shampoo to clean the vehicle. However, from my experience, I really don't actually think there's that much in it. When I'm cleaning most cars with a two bucket method, I'm usually using about 20 to 30 ml of water. When I do the foam months method, I can usually get away with a total amount of solution in my foam cannon of about 250 to 300 mil. If I'm using a 1 to 9 dilution, which I usually am, that's only about 25 to 30 mil of the shampoo. So for me, there really isn't that much in it. And then the final disadvantage that I think is worth mentioning is that if you are applying the foam to the vehicle and you've got a really thick layer of it, you do run the risk of your wash mitt just sort of gliding across that and not really being in contact with the paint and cleaning it properly. So when you come to rinse it off, you might have essentially missed some bits as you've not been able to sort of really touch them with the mitt. So when using this method, it's a bit of a balance between how much pressure to put on the wash mitt and how thick to get that foam. You don't want to create a really super thick layer as that is probably going to lead to some problems. So that is just something to keep in mind if you do go for this. So now onto the multi-mitt method, which is a very popular option to go for. So the premise here is that instead of using a bucket of water to rinse out your mitt between panels, you just swap to a new mitt every time you go to a new panel. So there are a couple of different ways you can go about getting shampoo on the vehicle with this method. You can either just use a singular bucket with your shampoo as normal, or you can use the foam lance method to get the shampoo on the vehicle. Either of these are going to work fine with this method. In terms of how many mitts you need, it's going to depend a little bit on the vehicle. I usually would use anywhere from eight to 10 mitts, using both sides of the mitts as well to make sure I'm not going over any areas with a dirty mitt. In terms of the advantages of this method, I think there's a strong argument for it being the safest in terms of it being the least likely to actually inflict swirl marks and scratches. The reason being is that you swap in the mitt so often that it shouldn't collect really any dirt and you're not running the risk of not being able to rinse that dirt out properly when using a bucket. So there is the argument there that it's a safer method to be using. I would also say that it's a faster method than the previous two because you're not spending that time rinsing the mitt out between panels. You really do save a bit of time. You can just swap to a new mitt and you can get around a car reasonably quickly with this. This method also uses the least amount of water because you're either using 
one bucket just with your shampoo solution or no buckets at all if you are using the foam once method. And of course, if you do combine it with that foam once method, then you're not having to carry any heavy buckets around the vehicle. So that does speed things up and make life a little bit easier too. There are, however, a couple of disadvantages of this method that I think are worth mentioning. Firstly, is that it's going to create a lot more washing. You're going to have to wash eight to 10 mitts per vehicle rather than just the one. Some people like this though, because they have a full load of washing, but yeah, it is going to create that extra washing to deal with. And then the second disadvantage is that it can be a reasonably expensive method depending on what mitts or pads you're using. Now, if you're using something like this, so this is a rag company wash pad, the mitts are similar. They're about sort of close to £15 per mitt. So if you're using 8 to 10, that is obviously going to rack up quite a considerable amount of wash media. However, if you are using the cheaper noodle style wash mitts or pads, these can be picked up for a lot cheaper. So you can usually go on Amazon or eBay and pick these up for about four quid each. So obviously if you are using them, then that is going to be a lot, lot cheaper. And it's probably the most sort of viable way to go about this method. So there is definitely the argument that this could either be the most expensive or the least expensive method, depending on what mitts you actually go for. So I also wanted to talk about a few other methods that I think are worth mentioning too. So firstly, rather than having your bucket to rinse out your mitt between panels, if you're using either the foam ants or the two bucket, you can sort of pressure wash or just rinse down your mitt with a garden hose in between panels and that will help to clean it. This is actually what I used to do quite a few years ago when I first got this car. And I did find it to be effective. However, I do feel like rinsing it out in a bucket does feel a bit more thorough to me. But again, there is the argument that your bucket is going to get dirty throughout the wash. So that is definitely something to consider too. And there is also the slight problem of soaking yourself with either your pressure washer or your hose if you rinse the mitt out in this way. It's the main reason that I moved away from it and found it a bit easier to rinse out the mitt in a bucket instead. And something else that I think is worth mentioning is the rinseless wash method. Now, the reason I'm not really going to talk about this too much here is because I have very, very little experience with it. I've tried it once on one car and yeah, I'm, I wasn't totally sort of sold on it. It felt a bit weird to me to not have sort of sudsy shampoo and to wash the car that way. But I know it's a very viable method. People who use it typically swear by it. So yeah, something to consider if the other methods that I've mentioned aren't up your street. And then finally, obviously you can use a bit of a combination of all the different methods if you don't want to use eight to 10 wash mitts per car. Use sort of three or four, combine it with a foam once or a two bucket, and you've got sort of some of the advantages and disadvantages of both kind of combined. And you're potentially going to get a hybrid that's going to work better for you. So, what I typically do on my car is use a foam once method, and I usually use a few mitts. So, I'll use a couple for the upper sections and then one for the very lower sections. And that just helps make things a little bit safer throughout the wash, but means I don't end up with an absolute ton of laundry at the end of it. So what I did want to make clear is that I think all these methods are viable options and I think when you're using good quality shampoo, good quality wash mitts or pads and combining them with one of those methods, you really shouldn't be inflicting any swirl marks or marring. What I do think is really important to note though is that the stage that goes before it, the pre-wash stage, is arguably more important than the contact wash method you use. Getting as much dirt as possible off at that stage is going to really sort of make or break the wash process. So really I think that's the most important point to consider and which wash method you use is really sort of a little bit less important in my opinion. So it would be great if you dropped a comment saying which wash method you use, why you use it, and if you've used any others in the past. Obviously, this is quite a topic of contention. There are loads of different methods and a lot of different opinions. I've tried to sort of cover all bases in this video, but I'm sure I've missed some things out. So please feel free to comment down below. And if you have enjoyed the video, then it would be brilliant if you could drop it a like. And thanks for watching.